What's up guys, my name is Ryan and I've spent most of my life living in the United States and I want to show you my favorite places. So here's my USA Top 25. The US is an incredible country from the beautiful Hawaiian Islands to the wild rock formations of the Southwest. Each part of the US has something unique to offer that deserves a visit. Let's start this video off at beautiful Lake Tahoe. I have to say that it's my favorite lake in the USA. Located right on the Nevada and California border, Lake Tahoe is the second deepest lake in America with a depth of over 1,600 feet. I mean, it's just absolutely massive. What I love about this lake is how clear the water is. I mean, it's just such a stunning blue color. It's also famous for having smooth granite rocks that peek out of the water. Now, a great place to go is Sand Harbor Beach. It's full of clear water and tons of Lake Tahoe rocks. It's an ideal place to swim and paddleboard. Me and my wife were there back in May. Now, while the water was freaking cold, it was still fun to go there and enjoy the scenery. If you do go, I'd recommend visiting in July or August so the water can warm up a little. After, we're going to head over to Yosemite National Park. Now, located about a four hours drive from Lake Tahoe, Yosemite is one of the most stunning national parks. It's famous for its massive granite cliffs, clear streams, and powerful waterfalls. One of the coolest features of the park is Half Dome. It's this gigantic piece of granite that rises over 5,000 feet from the valley below. One side is a sheer cliff, while the other half has the appearance of a rounded dome. One of the most famous waterfalls in the park is Yosemite Falls. It's one of the world's tallest with its upper falls being 1,430 feet high. One of the more peculiar waterfalls in the park is Horsetail Falls. During mid-February, the setting sun hits the water just right, creating the illusion of a firefall. Yosemite is home to some of the most beautiful spots in the U.S. and I hope you all can visit. From Yosemite, we're going to head to the coast to visit Big Sur. Now, located on the Pacific 101 Highway, Big Sur is one of America's most scenic drives. Known for its winding turns, seaside cliffs, and views of the misty coastline, one of the coolest places in Big Sur is the Bixby Creek Bridge. It's one of California's most photographed bridges, and you'll understand why when you get there. Big Sur is also home to Mickway Falls, which is an 80-foot waterfall that falls onto the beach below. If you keep driving south on the 101, it'll take you to this elephant seal vista point. It's this beach filled with thousands of elephant seals. They're some of the largest and weirdest animals I've ever seen. Depending on what time of year you go there, they may be sleeping on the beach or fighting to the death. Pretty crazy animals. Now, while we're still in California, we're going to visit the California redwoods. Now, the redwoods are the tallest trees in the world with the highest reaching 379 feet tall. There are groves of redwoods scattered along the northern California coast. And there are plenty of places to see them. I went to the Jedediah Smith Redwood State Park. We explored the grove and I was just blown away by the size of the trees. Not only were the trees amazing, but just the whole ambience of being there. The trees pretty much blocked out all sunlight and then the ground was covered in these ferns that made it feel like you were in a Jurassic Park film. I mean, such a magical place. Now, after exploring California, we're going to make the drive up to Oregon. Now, I have to say that Oregon is one of my favorite states. It's home to massive volcanoes and countless waterfalls. Me and my wife did a road trip through the state about a month ago, and it was extremely enjoyable. Oregon is home to some of the best coastline in the USA. I highly recommend just driving down the 101 Coastal Highway. One of my favorite stops was this place called Meyer Beach. It had these massive rocks, and we had the beach all to ourselves. Another scenic spot is the Samuel H. Boardman scenic corridor. It's one of the most beautiful spots on the Oregon coast in my opinion. If you keep driving up the 101, you'll reach Cannon Beach. When you think of Oregon, you might think of Cannon Beach. I remember first seeing this place on Steven Spielberg's movie, The Goonies, and I've wanted to go ever since. It's famous for its haystack rock. It's this massive 235 foot sea stack that shoots out of the ocean. In 2013, it was listed as one of the world's 100 most beautiful places by National Geographic, and I I totally understand why. It's a wonderful beach to relax or jump in the water if you can handle the cold. After Oregon, we're going to head up to neighboring Seattle. Located in the state of Washington, Seattle has to be one of my favorite cities. I just love how it's built right on the Puget Sound, contrasted with a skyline full of skyscrapers and a backdrop of the massive Mount Rainier. Now, one place you gotta visit if you're in Seattle is Pike's Place. It's a public market that has been open for more than 100 years. It's full of fresh produce stands, unique shops, and the world's first Starbucks. I just love all the colors, smells, and just all around vibe. Pike's Place is also home to the Gumball, 
it might gross you out, but at least it's full of colors. After Seattle, we're gonna head up north to visit Alaska. When you think of untamed wilderness, Alaska is it. And it's just a land full of some of the world's biggest mountains and glaciers. And it's one of the few places in the USA where you can see the Aurora Borealis. When I look at these landscapes, I mean, they're just so vast and untouched. I mean, it's unbelievable. One popular form of transportation is by helicopter or bush plane because some spots are just so remote. So if you ever wanna escape the chaos of the world, Alaska may be the place Place you gotta go. After Alaska, we're gonna head over to Hawaii to visit the island of Oahu. All the Hawaiian islands, I have to say Oahu is my favorite. I lived there for over eight months on the North Shore and it was some of the greatest times of my life. If you love hiking, surfing, or adventures, Oahu is the place for you. One of the most popular places on Oahu is Waikiki. It's a perfect combination of city and ocean. The beach is lined with high-rise hotels and shops. It is a perfect place to surf and catch some waves. Another one of the most famous places on Oahu is the North Shore. The North Shore is 17 miles of coastline that is home to some of the greatest surfing in the world. One of the most well-known beaches on the North Shore is the Bonsai Pipeline. The waves are created by a super sharp and dangerous reef that causes the waves to break just right. During the winter months, some of the most popular surfing competitions are held here and the waves can reach over 20 feet high. When there aren't crazy waves, I love swimming on the North Shore. The water is so clear and the waves are just such a fun time to swim in. While we're still in Hawaii, we're going to head over to the island of Kauai. Of all the Hawaiian islands, Kauai is the oldest, making it the most beautiful and diverse. It's nicknamed the Garden Island, and when you go there, you'll understand why. One of my favorite places is the Nepali coast. There are very few places in the world, if any, that match the beauty of this coastline. The Nepali coast is filled with sea cliffs that rise 3,000 feet from the ocean, contrasted with deep, narrow valleys that empty to the sea below. There are several ways to experience the Nepali coast. Coast. One of the best ways is by helicopter. Prices range from anywhere between two to three hundred dollars for a 50 minute tour. You'll be able to get some of the best views in Nepali coastal cliffs and valleys. Another great way is through a boat tour. These range from three to six hours and cost upwards to hundred and fifty dollars per person. If you're on a budget like me, there's plenty of hikes and lookout spots you can go to. One of my favorites is the Kalalua Lookout. Another amazing place to visit in Kauai is Waimea Canyon. Nicknamed the Grand Canyon of the Pacific, it's over 10 miles long and 3,000 feet deep. I just love the contrast between the red rock against the tropical vegetation. After exploring the Hawaiian Islands, we're going to head back to the continental U.S. to visit the iconic New York City. With its massive skyscrapers, diverse cultures, and hustle and bustle atmosphere, it's a place that needs to be experienced. I was fortunate enough to live in New York for a few months and the city lifestyle quickly grew on me. One of my favorite places in the city is the Brooklyn Bridge. The Brooklyn Bridge is one of the most photogenic places in all of New York. It's this massive bridge that connects the boroughs of Brooklyn to Manhattan. The bridge was finished in 1883 and it's become one of New York's most popular attractions. I used to love walking across the bridge and enjoying the view of Manhattan and the water below. The bridge is a great place to experience during the day and it gets even more stunning at night because you'll be able to see the city lights. One of the most famous places in New York City is Times Square. It's one of the world's most popular tourist attractions, bringing in over 50 million people each year. It's full of thousands of lights and advertisements. I mean, there's just so much energy there. You can walk around there for hours. There are entertainers on the street and tons of other random attractions. Now, if you want a nature break from the city, you can explore Central Park. Opened in 1876, it's home to beautiful bridges, tons of walkways where you can exercise or ride a bike. I mean, just such a beautiful contrast between the hectic city life. After exploring New York, we're going to head over to the nearby region of New England, now located in the northeastern part of the U.S. New England is comprised of Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Maine. New England is one of the most historical regions in the U.S. It's where the Pilgrims settled in 1620, and it's also where the Revolutionary War was born. I mean, just such a fascinating region. The most populous city in New England is Boston. Located in the state of Massachusetts, Boston is one of the oldest municipalities in the U.S. Founded in 1630 by the Puritan settlers, historical events such as the Boston Tea Party took place during the Revolutionary War here. Today, Boston is a thriving city, home to universities such as Harvard and MIT. Now, if you want to escape the city and see some nature, I suggest going to Vermont. This may be one of the best places to visit during fall. The trees turn to unbelievable red, orange, and yellow colors. Vermont is also home to historical towns such as Brattleboro. Now, another one of my favorite states in New England 
England is Maine. Maine is the northeasternmost point in the U.S. as it borders Canada. It's famous for its scenic coastline filled with lighthouses and lobster shacks. One of my favorite cities in Maine is Portland. It's a charming city on Maine's coast. It was first settled in 1623 by European settlers. Today it's known for its old port district and harbor. One of the coolest places is the Portland Head Light. It's a historic lighthouse that was built all the way back in 1791, making it the oldest lighthouse in Maine. Another beautiful place in the state is the Acadia National Park. Acadia is mostly located on the Mount Desert Island. The National Park is full of granite peaks, rocky coasts, and tons of beautiful trees. I have to say it's one of the most impressive national parks on the East Coast. After Maine, we're going to head to the opposite side of the country to visit the Florida Keys. So the Florida Keys are a Coral Cay archipelago looking right off of southern Florida. It's basically the American version of the Bahamas. What's really impressive is that all the islands are connected by a road, making it one of the coolest drives in the U.S. I was out in Florida in December and I really wanted to drive all the way to the end of the Keys. When you drive on the bridges, you'll be able to see the blue Caribbean Sea. One of the most impressive ones is the Seven Mile Bridge. At the time of its construction, it was one of the longest bridges in the world. I mean, it just looks like it never ends. The final destination on the Keys takes you to the city of Key West. It's the most southern place in the continental U.S. We spent the sunset swimming on Fort Zachary Taylor State Park Beach, and it was just the perfect way to end the day. All right, after Florida, we're going to head over to Wyoming to visit Yellowstone National Park. I went here a few weeks ago and it was a magical experience. Now one of the most famous places in Yellowstone is the Grand Prismatic Spring. It's the third largest hot spring in the world with a depth of 160 feet and from above it displays a remarkable rainbow color. You can walk on the platforms around the spring but you'll get the best view by taking the short hike up to the Grand Prismatic Spring overlook. Another iconic spot in the park is Old Faithful. It's one of the world's most famous geysers because of its reliability. It erupts around every 90 minutes and the boiling water can reach 185 feet high. You can also make a drive up to the upper falls. It's one of the most powerful waterfalls I've ever seen. Another less popular but just as stunning spot is Mammoth Springs. I went there first thing in the morning and it was magical with all its mist coming off the hot spring terraces. Now while we're still in Wyoming, we're going to head over to the nearby Grand Tetons National Park. I have to say this is one of my favorite national parks. I just love the incredible scenery and the unique jagged shape of the Grand Tetons. I and mean, there's tons of hikes to go on. One of my favorites is to Delta Lake. It's a somewhat challenging hike, but when you reach the top, you're rewarded with a blue Gatorade colored glacier lake that has the backdrop of the massive Grand Teton Peak. I mean, it's just hard to beat the location of the spot. When I went there, I just had to jump in the water. I have to say it was some of the coolest I've ever been in, but nothing makes you feel more alive than a polar plunge in some glacier water. If you want a more relaxed experience in the Tetons, you can take the ferry across Denny's Lake and then make a short hike up to the waterfall. Now after Wyoming, we're going to make the two hour drive to Idaho to visit the St. Anthony Sand Dunes. I mean this place is bizarre. It's over 10,000 acres of sand dunes right next to some farmland I and mean, it just feels so out of place. But the whole area is the ultimate playground. Some of the dunes reach 400 feet high. Now if you love riding dune buggies or dirt bikes, this is the place you gotta go. My grandparents live nearby, so I've come here many times. Whenever I'm here, I feel like I'm in Dubai or somewhere exotic. It's just such an epic place you gotta visit if you're ever in Idaho. Now after Idaho, we're going down to Utah to visit the famous Bonneville Salt Flats. The Salt Flats are located about two hours west of Salt Lake City. It's one of the craziest locations in Utah and the world. It's basically 30,000 acres of mud covered in a layer of salt. There's no vegetation, so all you see is white and the surrounding mountains. The Salt Flats have been featured in many music videos and movies such as Pirates of the Caribbean. I love coming out here and just messing around on the salt whether it's setting up a tramp on the salt flats or jumping over my car since the salt is completely flat the world's fastest land record has been set here if you do go be cautious about driving on the salt because you can sink your car if the salt isn't dry now when it rains the salt flats become the world's largest mirror and it's just a truly a surreal place that you have to visit if you're ever in utah after utah we're going to new mexico to visit ship rock now this may be one of the most random and unique structures I've ever seen. Special thanks to my friend David and Rule 
for helping me out with the footage here. He has some amazing shots of ship rock. What I think is so unique about it is the volcanic spines that lead up to the rock. From a Google Earth point of view, you can see three volcanic spines that all come together at the rock. I mean, I've never seen anything like it before. The rock is sacred to the Navajos. They named it the Rock with Wings. I mean, what a bizarre place. While we're still in the southwest, we're going to visit Lake Powell. Now, Lake Powell is one of the coolest man-made lakes in the world. It's a reservoir that is located in Utah and Arizona. It's been called America's Lost National Park because you feel like you're in the Grand Canyon, except it's filled up with water. Now, Lake Powell was created back in 1960. A lot of my family and friends will rent a houseboat and go boating down here for weeks during the summertime. I mean, I just can't think of a better place to go wakeboarding, and it's a mecca for cliff jumping and water sports. I mean, Lake Powell is such an incredible place and i hope you all can visit one day now a super cool spot right outside lake pal is horseshoe bend it's this picturesque section of the colorado river surrounded by massive cliff walls another really fascinating nearby attraction is antelope canyon it's located just 20 minutes from horseshoe bend now, Antelope Canyon is one of the most impressive slot canyons in the world. From the outside, the area just looks like a normal desert landscape. As you descend in the slot canyon, you witness some of the most beautiful sculpted sandstone. The canyon was formed by flash floods and thousands of years of erosion. Now, for our last destination, we're going back to Utah to visit Zion National Park. Now, Zion is just out of this world. Pictures and videos don't do it justice. It's home to steep red rock cliffs that are thousands of feet high. One of my favorite and most most famous places in Zion is the hike to Angel's Landing. It's about a five mile round trip hike that's famous for its sketchy chain trail. We crossed the bridge over the Virgin River and headed up the trail. We hiked up some steep switchbacks until we reached the top. Angel's Landing is famous for its thousand foot drop offs and chains that lead the way. I did the hike in the winter so it was icy at times. I bought my 360 camera so I could get every possible angle up the trail. I was able to reach the top and the view just blew my mind. I was able to see all of Zion's Canyon. I was just surreal. If you can handle the heights, I hope you can hike Angel's Landing sometime in your life. Well, that is it for my USA Top 25. Let me know where your favorite place is in the United States in the comments below. I also started a relaxation channel where I post hour-long films with calm music to bring some peace and nature in your life. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan, and we will see you later. Yeah.